you doing? Wes White. Wes White, I'm Julian Duval Doty, D O T Y. I'm Tyler Malinky. Okay. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Glad to meet you guys. This, yeah, this is an old timer. And uh, he run, I think, about five years that he run this particular bike. And uh, I can always remember him. He was a big, tall fella. And uh, he always wore black leathers with white stripes on them and white stripes. Looked like a, a skunk, would you say a skunk? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, he, he was a good chauffeur and uh, I don't think he ever fell, but the bike did wobble a couple of times. And uh, God, I, didn't, I thought that was in sold for parts 20 years ago. This has been 35, 36 years ago. Right. Actually, 1970, 71 is when he ran it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it's just a good old bike, that's all. What do you remember about Theo? As far as you remember his, what he looked like, his personality, any of that? Yeah. I couldn't really say, but I think he was part Indian. I'm not positive. But he was part Indian and he had uh, olive colored skin. And uh, he was semi social. And uh, especially with the bike guys, you know, yeah. you're, talking, you're talking car guys and he wouldn't. Ah, that's something else. But when you talk motorcycles, he was very good. That's about it as far as I know. Do you remember hanging around with Fritz Cott? Do you remember hanging around with Fritz Cott? No, but Fritz Voigt. That's another one. That was Mickey Thompson's cohort, and he might have hung around with him. But uh, no, that's about it. But I've run, personally, I've run motorbikes. I've had 87 of them. 87 bought, bikes? <laughs> yeah. I bought a brand new Scout in 1937, put 109,000 miles on it. Wow. And it's being restored now down in Echo Park area. Oh, really? And I've had square fours. We put a square four in a Norton Manx frame for Arnold Burner. And then uh, I run uh, with um, I work for Harry Pelton Motorcycles in Hollywood. We run short track. We had 12 Japs and one Crocker. And we used to run the highest uh, per week was nine nights, but normally it was five to six. And Lincoln Park was number one. That's where we headquarters for the short tracks. So is that what a, you did, race, race short tracks? Pardon? Did you race short tracks? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we. Uh, that was in... 47, we took uh, nine Japs and the one Crocker. We went up to Portland, Oregon, and that was headquarters, and we run nine, di uh, five different little cities around there, hmm. and, and, and all in their ballparks, and uh, it was a good deal. Did you ever run motorcycles at the lakes? Run motorcycles at the lake? No. Why not? You get hurt if you fall down. In a car, you don't. <laughs> no, I would have run them, but uh, I was mainly interested in the four-cylinder stuff, building all that. Right. And uh, run, we run track roadsters, CRA, and then I was at Indianapolis in 1948 with um, Tommy Lee's cars. We was running uh, the Novi, and that's when Ralph Hepburn got killed. In 1956, I was there. 1962, I was there. But you take the Novi car, if you didn't have, they run a centrifugal, gear-driven centrifugal blower that weighs 13 pounds. And they're turning at 90 grand. Wow. Like this, and it was gear-driven to the engine. Down the back straightaway, they're running 200, 220. You take your foot off of it, the kinetic energy of this thing was all brakes going into the corner. And I wanted to put a one-way sprag so that you let this thing still turn at 90 grand, but the car would slow down. Hmm. You understand what I mean? Yeah. You go around the turner, you put your foot in it, it's all spooled up, everything's working fine, and you come right back on your 700 horses. And But uh, Gene Marsenak and Bud Winfield, who made the engines, it wasn't designed that way. That's it. <laughs>
What? Uh, how long have you been racing on the lakes? I mean, how Since long have you been? 1934. Coming out to El Mirage or other well, other lake beds? Uh, we started at uh, Muroc, which is Edwards Air Force right. Base now. Right. June 4th, 1940, we got kicked off of there. The government kicked us off. We went over to Roseman, which is eight or ten miles from Edwards, mm -hmm. Mira, and we got kicked off of there in four months. We went out to Harper, which is out here about uh, it's 31 miles from Kramer's Junction, then come back over here. That was during the war. They off and on between Harper and here, right. and then from here on, yeah. I was in a timing stand for 30 years, given the timing slips, and uh, run under a tank on the roadster. So you were at the first Bonneville? I was at the first Bonneville, and Speed that's when I said, yeah. I, you know, we rode the, drove the sprint car up there. And then uh, at uh, Bonneville, you, you went out old, the old, they called it Suicide Highway. It was a mound of dirt built up, 20 foot wide each way, from Wendover to Salt Lake City. And on an average, at least three times a week, it would be head-on collision, people killed. And to get out on, on um, the salt, you had to come out to the telephone relay station, which was 12 miles from Wendover. You went down a dirt dike onto the salt. Hmm. And uh, when we first set up there, we had putt-putt generator. We had a half-inch drill motor with a 18-inch auger, inch and, inch and a half in diameter, to go down into the salt because it was probably 12 to 14 inches thick. And we put rebar down in there, and then we had wire, just old telephone wire from, from World War II, and that made the pit area. Now. There's about three quarters of an inch, if that, of salt on top of the mud underneath. That. What was the uh, the turnout like at the the first first, first trial? meet? I think was '86 or '89. Yeah, and then it kept growing ever. The highest I don't know what has been the last year or two. I haven't paid too much attention, but it's over 500. Yeah, and half of them are rat rods. <laughs> and the reason why the rat rods are in, they have to pay the $75 entry fee to get the 25 cent timing tag. <laughs> was it. And they didn't have to, they had this safety inspection to a certain thing. Yeah. It? And then everything's come along so nowadays it's like Jim Miller's, his car's a He's of the Miller dynasty, Miller race cars and stuff. The, he's a great grandson. His car's like this. It's Lakester, it's 20, 22 inches wide and it's 18 foot long. But now they got the bars on the side so your head don't turn. But what happens if you slide out? Well, you got your crotch strap and everything. Well, now what are you gonna do with your head? Now they got hooks that's gonna hook your helmet to the back. You got to get in there, it takes you 10 minutes to get it all hooked up. Now how in the <laughs> hell are you going to get out of that? And so many guys are saying, well, we like to run here again, but the safety regulations are getting too much. That's yeah. it. What was, the, uh, what was the scene like back when you were first at Bonneville between motorcycle guys and the, the car guys? Was it friendly? Was there any... Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, no yeah, problem. It was just a Big, Big pool group. of guys, you know, yeah. like a herd of cattle out there. There they are. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah, you needed, you never locked up your toolbox. You never left. You could leave anything out there, and the guy'd come over. Hey, can I borrow that wrench for a minute? Yeah. You didn't know him from Adam. Sure. Just yeah. be sure you bring it back. Yeah. Oh, well, do you need any bolts or nuts? I got a few bolts or nuts. You, I may need a couple. I'll come over and see you. You know. Right. It was very, very good. Great. Now, Nowadays, lock everything up. Uh. <laughs> but that's life in the big city, you know. <laughs> yeah. Anything else? Um, just, uh, just, you know, about, you know, why they started doing it, you know, what, what was the appeal. And, For racing. Why is he still coming out here and stuff? Yeah. Pardon? What, what made you come out to the salt or to the El Mirage in the first place? 
work I end a late oh, racing. I, I was in um I won let's see what it's the neck it's the hill on here's Hollywood Boulevard. I was born and raised in Hollywood. And here's the hill McKinley. And it was soap docks derby. You go down the hill to Hollywood Boulevard. That was my first episode. Your first racing episode? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's and after great. that you were a bit, huh? Yeah. <laughs> that was it, yeah. Well, Uncle George, he, he was uh, in the Ascot sprint car. My dad was in uh, sprint car, Ascot cars, and he run a Rajo. And I used to sit in the seat, like pretend like I'm driving, you know, and they're working on it. 1932, 31, and 30. During the Depression, you didn't have it no money to speak of, so you'd go spend 25 cents, because gasoline was two gallons for 15 cents, and you could go over to the track for, say, 25 cents, take the car, and that was it. And I've, my hands, this here, I lost that when I first opened the garage in 1939 when I got out of high school with another guy, and Elena, we're working on the track road stern. I'm laying underneath it. 1934 Dodge Business Coupe. And they had a, a stick shift with a freewheeling unit on it. And I'm laying up. The guy, we we're working on the road, sir. The guy come up and he saw us working. And he says, I'll give you $50 if you can put this clutch in my car. Because he was from Frisco and he burnt the clutch up coming up over the, the ridge line, route. Yeah. But he got parts in San Fernando, but he couldn't find anybody to work on it. So he saw us working on, the, yeah, 50 bucks. My God, that's like a thousand a day. So anyway, <laughs> we're working away and two hours later, we're stuffing it back in. I'm laying on the ground and, uh, okay, you ready? And my buddy's up in there with the gear shift and the ball, you know, uh, the ball, there were all gear shift levers with ball. And I says, okay, here we go. We're going to stuff it. So he started lifting up. We're getting it up. And he says, I'm clipping, we're all full of grease. And he said, I said, well, when you get to the ball, you'll stop. He got the ball all right, but it was a Pet Boys rubber push-on one. <laughs> and the transmission come out. Lopped your finger That off. was it. Gang rain set in. I didn't, I used to have um, pus come out of that. And I had a sack under my arm for nine months. And Aetna, A-T-E-N-A, I got $6.12 every two weeks insurance pay because we run the shop business through Mr. Hershey's gas station on the corner. Six dollars every two weeks. Reason. <laughs> and I had my 29A Roadster with a Miller Schofield. I still got that engine. I don't have the Roadster anymore. And I used to have to go every third week down to Long Beach to Dr. Smith. He was a some specialist with a, I don't know what you call it, uh, to suck the stuff out. I had yeah. a cone here. I used to keep a eight ounce bottle of alcohol and boric acid, and I had to keep this wet because that sucked the poison out. Yikes. So how many years have you been going to Bonneville? Since 1949. Did you miss any? Huh? Did you miss any? I missed one year. Well, I shouldn't say I missed it. We got rained out. There was no Bonneville. Every right. other year, though, you were there. Huh? Pardon? Oh, you're, yeah. 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 Why are you still coming out? You just love love the scene? What, I you have know. nothing else to do. <laughs> I'm not married. <laughs> yeah. And I got, a, I got nine 40-foot trailers sitting over there full of stuff, race car junk, most of it. And there are probably 20 motorcycles in one alone. Wow. And uh, ah, nothing else to do. Right now, I'm working on the, the Willie's head. I dig, dug it out. Cast up five in 1935, Iron One, and I just remachined that. This one, and that's going to go to uh, Charlie Porter, is the guy's name, judge in San Luis Obispo. In the Hot Rod magazine, Uncle George put a little ad in it for overhead for a Willie's. And he's got a 1937 Willie's coupe that his dad gave him. 52 years ago, and he's got a license plate that says um, R. Dunn 60. R. Dunn V8, you know? Well, R. Dunn originally was a V8 60, 
in England. Yeah. Because a V860 is a big engine in England. So he was going to put that in the Willys. Well, he he went down to uh, um, Ferguson, Don Ferguson, who makes the uh, Ardunns now. Anyway, he got a picture and he says, well, I, I got to cut up too much of the frame and stuff of the Willys. Then he found this little ad and thing and through the grapevine, you know, talking to different he found me. Well, I dug out one, the two heads that are left, yeah. and I'm remachining them now. That's it. Nothing else to do. Just want you to tell us when the, when the first time you went to Bonneville was. When? 1949. 1949. The first Bonneville. That's when we towed the Sprint car. Right. Yeah. And then the next year, we had a, a tank that we b borrowed, and I put the McDowell in it. And we turned uh, a belly tanker. Or? Yeah, yeah, belly tank. Yeah, uh, we turned 142 or 143 with that. Then, in 1953, New Year's Day, we started building my sprint car, and we run Bonneville in August. Turned 141. It's still a record for a four banger. Wow. And uh, <laughs> there you go. That's it. Well, appreciate you talking to us. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you, guys.